Hello and welcome to Gotham Sound coverage of NAB 2025. Thank you so much for being here. As uh, it seems to be a tradition, we are kicking off things day one with Carl Winkler of Electrosonics. Carl, how are you? Doing great. Great. Thanks. Good to see you, Nick. And uh, you. thanks for starting the show with us. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, look, let's just dive right in. We'll uh, let our uh, viewers know that uh, if you have any questions or comments for Carl, uh, please leave them in the chat. We're on YouTube and LinkedIn and Facebook, and you can leave comments anywhere, and we'll give them uh, straight to Carl and, and get the answer from the Carl's mouth, as it were. Uh, so, Carl, what are we talking about this year at, uh, at NAB? Sure. Well, let me start with a little bit of review. Last year, we showed you the new wireless designer that had the ability to uh, create and edit flex lists uh -huh. and frequency groups. So that's been released and also enhanced a little bit, you know, as we've done a couple updates since then uh -huh. to add a few more uh, bells and whistles. And then uh, we also added the ability to import and export CSV files uh, for scanning purposes. So you can bring in a, a scan from like a, a portable device uh, you can export a scan, so you could use it with a different software mm. like IAS or Wireless Workbench. So the software is much more flexible now in terms of importing and uh, exporting and importing. Importing, uh -huh, right? Uh -huh, okay. <laughs> it's early in the show. I can't talk yet. <laughs> um, so that's a little bit of review. And then what we're adding new for the latest version is that um, the DSR4 receiver now will have the ability to do uh, mode 7 uh -huh. and Q3, which are both for the uh, Q5X analog transmitters, yep. and then also IFB mode. So that's ah. uh, that's being released soon for the DSR4. We're just checking it through QA right now. But uh, Wireless Designer will support that. Mm -hmm. So while you're creating your flex lists and your uh, frequency groups, you can also uh, put this unit into those compat modes. So that's brand new. And one of the things that I remember really liking is the grouping on this, that the, the oh, compatibility yeah. mode follows the group. You program it in by the group. That's right. You're talking about like the party dialing where uh -huh. you can set up these exactly. And so you can e create and edit all that in Wireless Designer. So your compat modes are in there, your channel names. So search by name, search by frequency, any of those things are available there and supported with Wireless Designer. So you connected. could you could program it here in, in Wireless Designer. Yes. And, and it, for people that aren't familiar with the DSR series, yep. um, it, there's there are special back plates that have USB, but there's also a USB on the front. Under the front plate, mm -hmm. exactly. So you could connect either way, depends on how, how it's mounted, in a bag or in a rack or wherever, mm -hmm. independently. Uh, and, uh, and exactly just as you said, create and edit those lists, blow it into the units, yep. and then share it between units as well. It's a it's a, a, a far cry from how it used to be on the 411s where you would be pushing and holding and scrolling and pushing and this and that and the other thing and, and the ability to do that with a laptop even just if you had it in your backpack because I'm a I'm an ENG guy if you can't sure. tell yeah um, but just to be able to have that and and you know program everything like that exactly and then save it call it up later so mm -hmm. let's say you've created that list and you've you know undocked your unit and blown it in there later you could edit it, re-blow it in, you know, so it just makes it much easier to do those things with a keyboard yeah. and then load it into the unit, share it with infrared. Right. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right, because all of these, you can send infrared here, there, and everywhere. That's right, and then share in, with the transmitters as well. Mm -hmm. So you go into that and share group with the transmitter, mm -hmm. and then the transmitters will have all those frequencies in that list as well. Ah. So it's very much a shareable ecosystem with that uh, information. Ah, yeah. okay, great. Um, all right, so we got we got wireless uh, designer, the updates there. Yep. Uh, and it is interesting. Uh, I don't know if we explicitly said this, but it's interesting that we've you know you've got the the M two T the uh, you know the D squared, and you've got the M um, the the DCRs all up there. Um, it's just neat to be able to kind of bring everything together. Absolutely. And one of the things we're showing is that with the flex list, for instance, mm -hmm. in the uh, M2RA, uh, you can uh, mix and match your compat modes now, which you didn't used to be able to do. Oh. But for instance, I've got stuff on uh, the duet transmitters uh -huh. on the M2Ts. I've got a handheld in D2 mode. And I've got the DSSM, the one that's in the water over there, which we'll show you at the okay, end, uh -huh. uh, listenable in the HDM mode. Uh -huh. And I can listen to any one of those just by scrolling through the flex list. Oh, so it really cool. shows the power of uh, 
you know, this ecosystem with all the different modes, encrypted or non-encrypted, mm -hmm. all, you know, uh, scrollable yeah. with the frequency groups with FlexList. So, and a, a, this would be really useful for a, you know, a producer or, or a sound person that needs to listen to a specific microphone. That's right. A boom operator can mm -hmm. tune into different, different feeds. Um, you can use it as like a, a tour guide system. You know, I mean, there's a lot of different applications for it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Um, well, do you want to uh, do you want to truck over to the DSSM and we can we talk get more there, about that? Oh yeah, don't well, forget yeah. about our Sorry. bag frames. Mm -hmm. So this is a promo, by the way, that's ending on April 18th. That if okay. you're buying uh, here, let's oh, yeah. let's pull it out here. and we'll show Tobias. There you go. This is the bag frame system, and it's basically a modular frame to mount units in a bag. And we've got uh, these inserts for the DSR, the DSR4, the SRC. And then uh, things like the A22 and even the 411A all can be mounted in this frame to keep your uh, slot receivers organized in a bag. And the promo is that if you're buying two channels of wireless, you get uh, this at 50% off uh -huh. and four channels of wireless, like a DSR4 with two wire transmitters, and you get the bag frame free, whichever one you choose. So that ends on April 50, uh, 18th nice. for the bag frame. Um, so one question we've got before we we head over to talk more about the DSSM. Yeah. Uh, well, I want to know this is incredibly light. Yes, uh, in terms it's of aluminum. It is. Mm -hmm. It's very very lightweight. These inserts are plastic mm -hmm. and uh, they add almost no weight to the bag at all. But it, it's it's aluminum and quite rigid. And you machine that in in New Mexico. All made right? in house. That's mm -hmm. right. Yes. Um, for people that haven't seen Electro's uh, machine at shop, it's it's really impressive. I I had an opportunity to go to. Rio Rancho, just outside of Albuquerque, and it's it's awesome. Yeah, we welcome people to come in for a factory tour. If you're in the neighborhood on a production or mm -hmm. passing through town, just give us a ring, and we'll take you to factory tour. It takes about an hour. Cool. Um, all right, so our first question is from uh, Axel. Um, Axel wants to know if you have any comments on which Electrosonics items are affected by the tariffs, like the IF Blues, for example. Yeah, all Electrosonics items are affected by the tariffs. Uh, we're U.S. manufactured in Rio Rancho, but we buy parts all over the world. Mm -hmm. So things like chips come from the Far East and so on. Uh, and so there is a price increase going into effect on April 15th. That's 5% across the board yep. of a price increase. IF Blues are going up more than that uh, because they're made offshore. Right. So check with your dealer uh, for the price. Check with Gotham. Yep. Yeah, we do. Uh, we have the information on that. It's been, been in all of our blasts. But yeah, April 15th is coming up soon. It is. It's not this coming week, but the week after. Yeah. yeah. And it's also when taxes are due. That's so mean. <laughs> um, all right. Thank you for your question. Any more, please put them in the chat. And by the way, uh, Gotham folk, if I miss anything, please let me know uh, because my phone turned off. Um, so I don't know if we have the ability to truck over there or if we sure. want to. Okay. We great. can enter. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, we'll let's just, uh, truck check over. Check out the DSSM under the water. Perfect. Um, so we we're on wheels uh, this, pardon this us, time. Pardon us. Pardon. All right. So uh, here we are with the the DSSM. D is for down under the water. No, right. No. <laughs> D for digital. Uh -huh. uh, descendant of the SSM mm -hmm. with uh, IP57 rated water tightness, and it uses the same battery, the LB50 Electrosonics battery. And it's got uh, dock charging capability, drop and charging, mm -hmm. and D2 and HDM transmit modes. It's got RF power selectable at 50 milliwatts, 25 and 10, just like the uh -huh. DBSM, plus the HDM mode at 4 milliwatts in this particular unit. Um, we were talking earlier about the idea that some people look at this as a very specialized product, but really it's the first general purpose watertight transmitter. Mm -hmm. It's got a removable battery. It's very small. It's uh, the same fidelity and... Um, the same modes as the other digital transmitters in our line. It works with a whole bunch of different wireless receivers, including uh, the DCR822, DSR4, DSR, DSQD, uh, DCHR, uh, and M2RA. Okay, okay, so the entire line of digital. So this is a completely compatible product. You know, a lot of times digital trans uh, watertight transmitters uh, were an, a specialized item. Right. Either they're big and heavy or they're you know, two-piece units with a tether, uh, a captured battery, and this is really the first one that's IP57 rated with a removable battery yep. and general purpose. 
Yeah, and thinking about like back in the day, the uh, the MM four hundred, right, um, which was a great transmitter, yeah. and then the WM, which is is a is a really good transmitter, but big, still in the line, uh -huh. but yeah, it's big yeah. and heavy, yeah, um, and and single block. Uh, so right. this is you know six times the amount of frequencies. Exactly, wide band tuning. It's mm -hmm. got all the the bells and whistles of the latest digital products, but very small and watertight. Yeah. So, um, you know, we were talking earlier about the kind of the benefits of watertight because you get a lot of people that are just like, well, I don't need watertight. Yeah. Um, but but what do you really see that as? And I have an anecdote as well. Oh, sure. Yeah. I've had interesting conversations where people say, I, I don't need watertight, but then they tell me how they have added a couple transmitters that are sweated out. Uh -huh. You know, so there's there's water everywhere. First on people's bodies, people sweat, and that's an issue. A lot of times you've got to cover it with a a uh, condom or use a silicone sleeve like the ones we make for our products uh -huh. and so on. Um, but there's, there's water in a lot of different types of environments, whether it be a film set, uh, you know, out in, in on location, you know, with a little bit of rain or someone in re reality television, people get pushed in the water. There's yeah. a lot of different things. Sure. Yeah. I, uh, well, for me personally, I, I did a show in Chicago where they had, uh, you know, they went on a boat and then they decided to jump in the in Lake Michigan. There you and, go. And boy, was that transmitter destroyed. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You know. And even if it wasn't, it was, you know, water damage is always one of those things where if you, you know, it, you never, it never know when it's going to rear its insidious head. You know, there and might it's be not some... covered under any warranty. Right. Um, just like if you had a, a phone and it quit working and you go to Apple and you say, hey, quit working, they're going to open it up and say, well, there's moisture damage. It's not right. covered. Exactly. Yeah. And then I had uh, had some friends do like a housewives ultimate trip. Sure. And, um, and I think they lost three transmitters, either from sweat or from, you know, people going in the pool or, you know, dropping in the things. toilet. That happens yep. sometimes. So it's an interesting like, uh, you know, production covers it. Um, but at the same time, you know, you're then down three transmitters. Uh, and in you know Thailand or someplace where it's not easily replaceable, yep. cuts down on the number of backup units you, yep. you likely need. So yep. yeah, there's a lot of good reasons for it, and we call it the first general purpose watertight transmitter. Yep. And the, th the other thing about it, and just since you have one here, and we'll get Tobias in, is that all the the edges are rounded. Yes. Right? So that was a request after the SSM. Mm -hmm. The SSM is a little bit smaller and lighter than this, but people asked for rounded corners. And they wanted it watertight. Uh -huh. And uh, a lot of people asked about drop-in charging, you know, as a as an uh, option. Uh -huh. And so we added that. There's a, a charging tray. Mm -hmm. Oh, show it to show oh, it yeah. to him, yeah. There's a charging tray available that's um, the CHS DSSM mm -hmm. that charges four units or four batteries, any combination. And those can all be ganged together and run off the same power supply, up to four of those chargers. So using it for, like, theater or a uh, sure. new show or something uh, Yeah, like exactly. That. Um, yeah, exactly. News station, exactly. Mm -hmm. Cool. All and right. One thing I want to mention, yeah. this question comes up fairly often. People say, like with the WM, mm -hmm. do I have to have my antenna and or my microphone oh, yeah. attached yeah. for it to be watertight? Mm -hmm. And the answer with this is no. Uh, we sourced watertight connectors here. So even with nothing attached, this is watertight. So that's different from the older versions. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. Where it's like if you were to unplug the mic, water would just get. Yeah, it. it's just a hole. You unplug the mic and it's a hole into right. the unit. And this one, they're completely sealed. Well, and the nice thing is, too, it's it's a, you know, not to not to discount the connector that was on the MM or the WM, but this is a, great. A, a standard LAV connector. That's right. The three pin Limo is, is normal. That's right. Three pin Limo double aught series, mm -hmm. whereas. The WM is our proprietary connector that was developed for the MM400. Mm -hmm. um, so I have another question here for you. Um, so CDSR, and maybe you understand this better than I do, but they want to ask uh, if they will soon see Electrosonics articles full control from an application. I, I imagine, I'm guessing, and uh, you know, CDSR, please clarify if you uh, have something else, but I imagine this is talking about remote control from a phone. Yeah, that's in the works. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. And there is, it should mention, there's the RM app, which uses the Dweedle. That's right. Yeah. It does, and that controls most of the uh, features of a unit. You can change frequency, change audio level, up or down. You can put it to sleep, wake it up, all from the RM app, which is an inexpensive app available to any smartphone, whether it be uh, the iPhone type or the Android. Uh-huh. I remember there used to be like a little box that you could buy. It was like called the RM2. Oh, the RM. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the RM and the RM2. Yeah, we had fun. a, you know, as the units began to 
expand and evolve. It's like the features kept growing, and it was very hard for it to keep up with a hardware device. Uh -huh. So it made a lot more sense to just have it be an app. Yeah. And we let the third-party developers uh, take that. Yeah. Yep. I remember that. That was that was all the rage. Yeah, it was. Um, all right. Awesome. Well, Carl, anything else that you want to share before we wrap things up? And No, I think that covered a whole lot, and I always appreciate you guys coming by. It's great to see you and uh, get a chance to talk to everyone. I, oh, yeah. I forgot what we wanted to mention. Um, we now yeah. have the, the DSS Seminar Rental Inventory. Oh, yes. That's yeah. available now in rentals. Yeah, that's in our in Gotham Sound, uh, New York, Atlanta. If you want to uh, you know, check one out, if you, you know, need one for a waterproof application or you just want to muck around with it, uh, you can contact our rental department uh, for rentals. One thing we do is if people rent it and they, you know, they fall in love with it. Um, if, if you rent it with the intention of purchasing it, you can often apply the there you cost go. of the rental to it. So that's, uh, you know, let us know if you're interested in that. All right. Um, another question. This is from uh, Tet de Mort, mm -hmm. uh, which is very exciting because I'm a big fan of their work. Uh, any chance that we will see an Octopack with Dante or similar? Not likely. Not likely. Okay, great. Because uh, the Octopack does still can still Octo with the DSR four. It can, and is, if you've got the output set to digital outputs, mm -hmm. you've got two uh, channels of audio on each of those connectors. So you're getting 16 channels of audio out via uh, AES mm -hmm. using the current Octopack. I don't know what the the Octo version of 16 is. <laughs> is anybody? Anybody? No? Okay. Well, we'll, we'll sort it. Uh, hex something. Hex, yeah. Hexapack. There you go. Hexapack. Hex Hexateen pack. <laughs> it sounds like a, a smoking thing. Uh, okay. Awesome. Carl, thank you so much for kicking us off of at uh, NAB 2025. Thanks for sharing the DSSM, yeah. the uh, wireless designer, and the updates, uh, which are sneaky but great um, in terms of the compatibility modes. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming by. Thanks to the whole Gotham crew and everyone here. And I uh, hope Hope you all have a great show. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing everybody and uh, and hearing from you out there. So thank okay. you. Okay, rock and roll. Thank you so much for watching. We will be back very soon with more live coverage from NAB 2025 and your friends here at Gotham Sound.